Oh my star. God, I'm so pretty right now. The star over here knows what he's doing. A lot of times I'll be on stage and I'll be like, oh, okay, like I'm singing Don't Speak, but I'm thinking about going to Del Taco after the show. <laughs> <laughs> What's the party? Banana, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Hey guys, it's Patrick Stone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Welcome to YouTube. Thank Welcome you for having me. This is amazing. You're amazing. I am actually here, Patrick Starr and me, glammed by him. I mean, this is a miracle, guys. Oh my gosh, you guys are in for a treat. We talk, we kiki, we just bond through beauty. If you guys didn't know, she is a pop star, sensation, a mother, and a beauty brand owner. We're gonna get into all the tea, so stay tuned for this full beat fantasy. Let's just jump right into the video. Guys, I still can't believe that Miss Gwen Stefani is up in here. It's bananas. I have no <laughs> doubt that we'll have a good time, okay? I couldn't be more honored, honestly, and excited. I just want you to do whatever you want to me. Mm -hmm. You know, she you, you got a little soccer game to go to for your kid <laughs> right after, so she's gonna be looking fly and sick at it. We have done this, the brows and everything so we can talk and have a key key. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this palette, Simple Kind of Life. It's a beautiful transition palette. As I start your eyes, I wanted to ask you, why, Patrick Starr, why did you want to come into the world of <laughs> YouTube and social media? So I started thinking about doing this give makeup line like probably six years ago. A lot of people real like know that like I went through a really bad breakup mm -hmm. of my family. And at that time, it was sort of like, what is the next chapter? Like, what do I want to do that's like my legacy, my thing that I keep being creative. I've done so many amazing things, dreams I could never dream up. Makeup's always been my number one. I have a song called Magic in the Makeup. Makeup is like always been my thing, like my escape. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. I think the first time I worked with Wendy Zomner when she did Urban Decay and she asked me to do a palette. Mm -hmm. And it was back in the day when people were just starting to, it feels like I was just discovering like YouTube videos and mm -hmm. makeup online. And when I did that palette and I saw everybody take it and be so creative with it and do their thing. Me and Blake used to like lay in bed and watch all, everyone's versions of those colors and mm -hmm. that palette come to life. And I was learned so much just watching it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy because girl, we, we met back then in the Urban Decay event at the London. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I'm like 50 first dates. Like I, girl. <laughs> I'm like, what happened yesterday? Oh my gosh, we're so, yes. oh my gosh. Uh, this was a while, a yeah, while back. Yeah, that is back. a while. We look exactly the same. We look the same, <laughs> honey. You were iconic then. Oh my gosh, thank you. Back in the day, going to get makeup and buy makeup was really intimidating. You either went to the drugstore where there was just no help and you just had to like play with disgusting samples and mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and figure it out yourself, or you had to go into the department store and be like completely intimidated by people behind the counter that were like stunningly beautiful and knew everything what to do. And I wanted to be one of those stunningly beautiful, intimidating people behind the counter. No, I'm just <laughs> And here you are. <laughs> and here you are, girl. <laughs> I was working at Plaza Sportswear, which is basically women would come in, I would help them get outfits, and it was like I really fulfilling. I loved it, but I really wanted to be behind the counter. And one day I just asked, I was like, Do you think I could work there? And they were like, Okay. And that's where I really fell in love with the feeling that makeup gives because I remember doing people's makeup and people would they'd be crying, you know, because they didn't know that that was a possibility that's probably when I really fell in love with makeup was working there but you've always loved the glam I always did I think it's probably from my mom not that she wore a lot of makeup her era was like the 60s so I would see all the we didn't have the internet guys believe it or not if you wanted to see like a reference of something from the past it was either go to the library and get like a, you know a Vogue magazine book archival or look at your mom's old pictures from when she was in high school I used to be obsessed with looking at all the old photos of my grandma who was a redhead and like all of the old stuff was what I loved like First time I saw Marilyn Monroe, like, some like it hot. Like, I was like, that's it. That's my makeup for the rest yeah. of my life. That's kind of where it started, I guess. It's just, it's really cool that you're always celebrating glamour. You know how I know she's one of the girls? It's my <laughs> friends that she 
obsessed with like Ernesto Casillas, yes! Makeup by Ariel, and she's always painted. And if you guys didn't know, at the Met, in the Chartreuse, in the Vera, you did your own makeup for the red carpet. And I don't know any celebrity on the face of the planet that would walk the Met Gala red carpet and do their own freaking makeup. You would. Well, oh. <laughs> it wasn't even supposed to happen. That, mm -hmm. that was like, I remember. yeah, it was yeah. just like not even supposed to happen, but mm -hmm. it was actually meant to be. And I, I had actually just learned a lot through Ariel. He's so open and free with all of his tricks. He's an artist. Like it doesn't matter how much he tries to show you how to do it. He, it's the way he paints, his touch, like the way he, he only he can be him. I've always done my own makeup for stage for pretty much everything. It was always so traumatizing. My first traumatizing makeup experience was doing the first No Doubt record. I was so naive and it's all guys, right, in, in the band and I'm the only one getting glammed and I didn't even know about that. But this guy did my makeup and I it looked so washed out. I just didn't know. Cut to that's the makeup on the record and like for the forever. And so after that, I just sort of was like, I'm always gonna do my own makeup. Then through the years, I think the first time that I was like, okay, I'm gonna let somebody try because I wanted to work with this guy, Hype Williams, who's a video director. And he's like, you have to work with this makeup artist, Matthew Anderson. And, and I was like, okay. And so he ended up doing my makeup for the ex-girlfriend video, which is like the pink, like the crazy extreme makeup mm -hmm. with the crazy mm -hmm. lashes. And after I worked with him, it was like, I couldn't stop. And I learned so much from him. I think the thing I love like even after being all these years into my life, like I can still wake up every single morning and reinvent my face and learn something new from somebody else when it comes to makeup. And when you share it, I mean, that's why I called it gift. You wake up in the morning and you sort of do that for yourself, but you're not really looking at yourself the whole day. You're basically like giving that to whoever you're going, like you gave me that today. What is your like steps when you do your own makeup? Are you eyes first or face first? That's a really good question. I go back and forth between doing like brows first, which I learned from Ariel. First thing he said to me, he just looked at me and he goes, um, I'm gonna do your eyebrows first. I do eyebrows first. And I was like, okay. And he, he takes forever with the brows. He yeah. wants it to be like. Yeah, it was like surgery. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I started doing that for a long time, but sometimes I'll start with skin and then do brows for stage. With all of these celebrity brands and makeup brands, what are you excited about? And what's important to you that people know, even though I'm a celebrity brand, I'm making gift because. It was a personal, like I said, pick myself up off the floor and get on with the rest of my life. I need to do something that I created that's gonna be my legacy, that's mm -hmm. gonna be my passion. And then I also wanted it to be something that like I could do with the people that have kind of exchanged love with me all these years. It's amazing, like for example, Todd, you met my brother here today. Mm -hmm. His wife, she's like online now and mm -hmm. like doing makeup and mm -hmm. you can't even believe the transformation of just her as a person to have that outlet and not only that, but as like, it's not like she's a makeup artist or anything, but mm. the way that she used to do her brows to now, how much she's learned in such a short amount of time and how much confidence and joy she's getting out of doing it. I think that that's another reason to do, you know, to be- Like literally give. Give. Like I asked my mom the other day, I was like, will you let me paint you on, like we'll film it and then people can watch. She's like, well, I don't know. People my age don't really wear makeup anymore. I was like, no, that's the whole thing. You can still wear makeup, like let's do do it and then she's like I'll think about it and then the next morning she texts me she's like okay I decided yes I think for me like with my eyeliner since it's something I've done since like ninth grade with a lot of makeup artists that I've worked with I just will be like I'll just do the liner because mm -hmm. it, it I can do it really fast and mm -hmm. I know my angles that looks so good I love it see that's my problem I'll get in my little zone and then mm -hmm. it will be that same makeup mm -hmm. over and over and over mm -hmm. that's why it's so good to just be open to mm -hmm. other people's makeup mm -hmm. with me Music, your music is so different. How did you find the vulnerability to always change instead of be comfortable and revert to like what you know? I wasn't trying to like reinvent the music at all. Mm -hmm. I think with No Doubt, it was the first time I ever wrote a song. It just came down and it was there. Like mm -hmm. I, it was a miracle. Like I never even wrote a song and then I wrote a song. It just came from being emotional. I wrote that whole Tragic Kingdom record. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how. Like it just, mm -hmm. I think of it now and I'm like, how did I do that? And I just think it literally was God like being like, okay, you're chosen to do this and here they are handle it well you know what I'm saying like this is your purpose it wasn't like a conscious effort to make it 
any different. It just mm -hmm. was what came out. I just felt like we need to like collaborate outside of the band. And that's when I was like, I really want to work with someone that's the opposite of what we are doing. And that's when I was like, I want to work with Pharrell. Mm. Pharrell was only doing hip hop at the time. We wrote hella good. I always think that God's the one that's like guiding it because I don't come up with the ideas. It's just all of a sudden it's there. Like I have to do this. And it was just like one of those times where everybody was free and open to being able to work with mm -hmm. people. And that's what happens when you open up. Like mm -hmm. you get something great. For you, does it get easier when the audience is singing back to you or when you get to the chance to perform it? I wrote it. I already put it out there. It's a hard thing to perform, but then in a way, does it get easier or does it still stay I as raw? That is a really good question. I guess it depends at what point in the process of writing it and how long. A lot of times I'll be on stage and I'll be like, oh, okay, like I'm singing Don't Speak, but I'm thinking about going to Del Taco after the show. <laughs> <laughs> or the opposite, where you get so deep into like going back back in time to that moment where you just are living it. Like I wrote this song called Used to Love You not that long ago. Yeah. But when I do that song live, like I feel like because it's so far into my career, like I feel like everybody is with me on it mm. and they're singing it with me to like mm. support me. I don't know, it just it's, it feels like there's like an unspoken, even though I don't necessarily know these people, mm -hmm. but I feel like we know each other so well. Every time I do that song, I get that support that I just, I can't believe I have. When you receive the love back from like your audience, and like you're like willing to receive it. and you're Gwen Stefani. When a man walks in your life, like how do you receive it? Like do you have like, I've been through this shit, but then someone comes in and says, howdy lady and- <laughs> What are you talking about? That's a really actually good question because I think that a lot of people that have had their heart broken mm -hmm. that hard, they feel like they just closed down and that's how I felt. I felt like I know that I'm gonna wake up every day, I'm going to put food in my mouth and I'm going to take care of my kids and then I'm gonna go to bed. Mm -hmm. and do it again. And I didn't have any chance and I will never make out with another person. Like, of course not. That was before- He knocked on your door. There was like this arrow. I feel like for me, for us, was finding a friend, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Literally finding somebody that was going through the exact same thing mm -hmm. at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And again, like I'm gonna bring it in, mm -hmm. but it's like, it was given as a gift to us. It was just so obvious, like once, the friendship began, it felt like, well, wait till you see us together, you're gonna go, oh. She gets to be her, like with somebody that actually sees her as her. It was like we always knew each other and we were, it was like we were home. I guess experiencing real true love for the first time and like, as you put a lash on, mm -hmm. a tear is dropping down my face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak. Ooh, that is not a lash I would choose, can I see? Mm -hmm. It's winged out. It's huge. Okay, you guys, but I love. I think what you've done that's mm -hmm. different that I'm gonna experiment with mm -hmm. is you've brought everything. I mean, here's my eyebrow, right? Mm -hmm. See how it's mm -hmm. going even past my to eyebrow. To me, this is Gwen. <laughs> like, we love the out-out. Because in beauty, to me, like, I always try to aspire for the upside-down triangle. I like to have this and then this. Mm. And nobody taught you. It's just given to Overall, you. Overall, right? I locked myself in my room. I disciplined myself and I said, I'm gay and <laughs> I'm going to be glamorous. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm so pretty right now. Okay. See what makeup does, guys? The star over here knows what he's doing. Mm. I'm like lucky to get my makeup off at mm. night before mm. bedtime. I'll be like mm. doing my books with the boys. Mm. All. Mm. Mom time is the real mm. deal, guys. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mom, as I do your lashes, what is the mom look when they're out of line? Are you a go <laughs> to your room or we need to talk? Uh, we need like, to talk. Mm -hmm. It's so different like mm -hmm. when the way I was raised, my parents met when they were 15, mm -hmm. they're still together. All they ever wanted in their lives was to have a family and like they, we were really blessed like that. We really had like a really tight family. But then when you have your own children and it's like, I have like such a completely different kind of life. So it's just been my, my own Version. version of it and it's been really it's really hard it's really hard to be an artist and do all the things we just talked about mm -hmm. and to be a mom and play mm -hmm. different roles mm -hmm. you know i was talking about this yesterday about how you want when you're a little girl you're like i want a baby like i want a little baby i'm gonna put them in their clothes and then uh -huh. you have this like little fantasy mm -hmm. of what it's gonna and be you got like. all boys and i got all, all boys <laughs> <laughs> i've learned is like each phase is so amazing and challenging, but I, I'm really loving having teenagers. Mm -hmm. My mom had said that to me. She was like, 
it was my favorite time. And she would talk about how, like, all the music that we listen to, like, mm -hmm. whenever she hears it now, it just reminds her so much of that time when she had her teenagers. And it has been incredible to watch them become them. I love being a mom. I think it's the hardest thing I do, for sure. I'm a part of the community, and for you to share this platform with me is, like, really freaking special because sometimes we just be going through hard times on these streets. And so for you to advocate for, you know, us while we get to, like, kiki and have glam is really important. And I think kids need to learn, like, love and respect respect and just openness and you've been an advocate for just everybody with, with your music and sharing oh, just like who you. you are and I think it's really important that people need to know like not to hate. Ooh, what are you gonna do? So this one is that's lasting my love. Oh it one. is? Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? Like that's because the one we're I wear besties. every day. <laughs> so I, I love that color because it's kind of peachy pink mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's really good for every day. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing for you to to develop and say like be at peace with? We're always wanting to change our mind. And yes. Like, what do we want? The paints were one of the things that I think was the hardest because I did not develop the paints to be what they ended up being. I was trying to develop like a great gel eyeliner that wouldn't dry out. It's funny because I was, I, Ariel basically, he, he tried them, one of the samples, he loved it. But the formula came out quite moussey, like more moussey than like gel. And when we set, we showed them to Sephora and they were like, mm -hmm. oh my God, these are so cool. You should make these as eyeshadows. And I was like mm -hmm. super open to it. So mm -hmm. we started playing around with them and we we're like, yeah, they are. And they're so waterproof. It's like, yes. it's insane yeah. like how waterproof they are. I think that was the hardest one for me and it was kind of fun to see people playing with them online because it was a kind of like a relief. I love my glosses, my lip glosses. Oh, I'm wearing Sweet Tooth. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So at the soccer game today, if your son hits a goal, what would Gwen do? Is she a standing ovation? Is she a... Uh-huh! That's, <laughs> That's my, my kid! kid. That's <laughs> I'm gonna wear my cheerleader outfit today. Do you see some of their creative, like tendencies of your creative or processes? My oldest, King, he is a songwriter. Oh my God. And it's so weird because mm. he's really, really good to like a shocking level. And the first time he, he was 15, he wrote a song just out of nowhere. I was like, what is that? And he's like, I wrote it. And I was like, you are such a liar. There's no way that you wrote that. Like, you Cause I was like, how are you, how do you just write a song? Every time he writes one, it's mm -hmm. like, you can ask any of these people that have heard him. Like you, you really, I really listen to them. Like they're that mm -hmm. good. It's really fun to watch them find their thing, you know? Now to lips. So for lips, I'm gonna take the liners Anaheim line and pout to get real, the overlining lip pencil. I'm gonna use Dolled Up. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh my gosh. That's Gwen mother stuff on you Same for me with you. Girl, shut the hell up. <laughs> shut I mean, up. I think a lot of people don't realize how much powder we use. Oh, but you know what the trick is for me? I love the powder for the blurring, mm -hmm. but it's when you spray is when it like all melts. And then the highlighter for the nose. So I'm gonna do two sprays, okay? One to melt and then one to waterproof. There she is. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and change and we'll be right back for the finished look. All right, you guys, this is the finished look! Oh I would like to say that the give is giving. The one <laughs> size is sizing. How do you feel in the smoky, I'm Gwen? I'm so into it. I feel like I learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. Not just about makeup, but just about how amazing you are, oh, by the way. So I love it. Cool. It's so, so, so cool. We are both available in Sephora, in stores, on Sephora.com, on GiveBeauty.com, OneSizeBeauty.com. And we are available here online for you guys to connect to us. And again, I have huge admiration for you, Gwen. Stefani, <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on my channel. Be sure to follow her everywhere on socials, on TV, press as a mother, a founder, a boss as bitch. If you guys want to see more videos with us, be sure to follow us everywhere. Comment down below. I love you guys so much. Don't forget, makeup is a one size fits all. And hope to see you all in our next video. Love bye. you guys. Bye. We don't shoot on one phone, we shoot on 10. <laughs>